and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Laura Rose and today I'm going to be doing a spoiler free review of The Hero of Ages by Brandon Sanderson, which is the third book in the series. This review is assuming that you've read the first two books. If you haven't, you should read those first before you watch this video and either way you should go check out my reviews because I review both of them on this channel. Alright, let's talk about The Hero of Ages. If you watched my first two reviews, you know that I thought the first one was pretty good with a great ending, the second one was okay with a great ending, and this one I thought was amazing all the way through. The Hero of Ages throws us right into the action. It takes place after Vin releases the power at the Well of Ascension, which we are now learning is not necessarily a good thing. The book follows her and Elend as they attempt to save their people from starvation and the mists which are killing the crops and also making people ill and even killing them. Our other favorite characters, Ham, Breeze, Spook, and Sazed, return and they help our Emperor as he tries to unite the kingdom together and get the resources he needs to be able to save the people. On a side note, I heard that is say Z as opposed to Sazed. I'm probably going to pronounce a shit ton of things wrong on this channel. We have a character named Twindlin that is spelled out that fucking long and I have to read that every time. In my head, it's going to be shorted to T. When I say it wrong on my channel, you can correct me. I'm still going to fucking call him Sazed. Just saying. The reason I really love this book is because the fight against Ruin seems so, so hopeless. And they're also fighting against Ash, struggling to feed their people, fighting against monsters. The whole time I was just like, how is this conflict going to resolve? It seems hopeless. How? And that's how you know you got a good book. So I really, really enjoyed this book, especially compared to the first two in the series. And I think a lot of that had to do with Sanderson's use of perspective. We see a lot of different character perspectives in this book, and we did in the last book as well, but this one really focuses on a lot of different people. It gives him a chance to really expand on those minor characters, and we actually see some of them grow a lot in this book. Especially Spook, I want to say, he takes kind of a more lead role. We get to see a lot from his perspective. You know that in the last couple books he was just kind of glossed over, so he's really dealing with those feelings as he tries to help the Emperor, Elend. Sanderson also talks about Tensoon, the Chandra. Oh my gosh, if you read the last book, you know what I'm talking about. Tensoon, am I right? Oh, the Chandra. I love the Chandra. I'm actually like obsessed with them. I wish I could have a whole book on the Chandra and just read about it. But Sanderson talks a lot about them in this book and I just ate it up. I think Tensoon was one of the first character chapters that we got and I was just like, yes, I want to read this forever. As much as I didn't like the second book in the trilogy, that's how much I liked this one and I finished it in four days. By this point in the story, I was really, really enjoying the character arcs. My problem with some of the last books was that the inner conflict was just ugh, so boring to me. We see some inner struggle, and with Vin, we always see a little bit of that, but I think she deals with it better in this book, and I like watching her as she accepts her role in the kingdom, especially since she's married to Elend now, so she has to. She can't really be, you know, whining about it anymore. She's part of this couple, this power couple, and they've got to do shit to take care of the shit that's shitting on them. A lot of the conflicts come from outside forces, so that makes for an action-packed book. Ellen to Becoming Mistborn is awesome. Thank you for that. I love to read about them kicking ass and taking names. We've learned about this magic system for so long, and now they're just really using it and being like, fuck you, we're gonna fucking kick your ass. So we're learning about Elemency still, and the way that the metals work, and the fact that Ellen is Mistborn really gives us another perspective to look at that from, because he took that little nugget at the Well of Ascension, so his powers actually differ from Vin's, and we're seeing how that works as they both battle. You know, Vin is very good at what she does. She was raised as a robber, so she's stealthy, but Ellen just has raw power. I mean, who doesn't want to read about Vin being this badass assassin? You know, she's not struggling with those feelings anymore. She's like, I'm gonna kill shit. And of course, all those creepy creatures that I love and the darkness of this book comes together to make a lot of battle scenes and fights and suspense and action and ugh, it's awesome. The way that the magic interacts with the mists is really interesting. The mists are a big part of this book. You know, they used to be really protective, but now not so much. And what happened to the mist spirit? We'll talk about that in this book too. Sanderson builds a lot of mystery around that, and we finally get to really peek into what the Miss Spirit is. My favorite part of this book was actually Sazed and his struggle with his depression. After Twindlin's death, he lost a lot of his faith, and Sazed has been the religious spearhead for us this whole entire series. I feel like the mental health problems were written really well, and as someone who has mild depression, it's really nice to see it portrayed 
in that way. It is difficult to write depression into a book and watching Say struggle with it, I could relate so hard because he doesn't have faith or hope in any of the things that he used to. And if you've had depression, any other sort of mental health issue, you know that that's how it is and people will tell you to just cheer up. And you wanna be like, you don't understand. And that leads into the themes of the book. The major one, again, being religion and faith. This book incorporates religion so well there's also, as usual, a lot of talk about friendship, a lot of talk about trust, and a lot of talk about love. I really do like the themes that Sanderson incorporates into these books because they're all things that I think are really important, and he writes it all so well without kind of throwing it in your face. He really forces it to the breaking point in this last book and really tests our characters on all of these subjects. Overall, obviously, I thought this was an amazing book. I actually don't have anything bad to say about it. The build-up through the whole series and through this book was totally, totally worth it. The payoff was so great. He wrote this awesome, dark, depressing, creepy world, and that really allowed him to reign with chaos in this final book. It was just nuts. He brought our character to the brink of hopelessness so many times, and you just have to watch them fight through that to save the kingdom. If you, like me, did not enjoy number two, just read this one. Trust me, it's going to be worth it. I had all the feels after this book. I actually had to sit down just so my brain could process what happened. Book hangover so hard. <sighs> Things just happened. I need to read it again, like right now, just to relive the awesomeness and just so I can really fully grasp all the things that happened. All right, that was my review for The Hero of Ages by Brandon Sanderson. Let me know if you liked it, what you thought about the book. Make sure to check out my other reviews. Comment down below and subscribe weekly for more videos. Have a glittery day.